you know, the digital divide, A, it is a construct of institutional racism and systemic inequalities. Like it's no different than all the other underlying challenges, right? The fact that we have shot spotter and next to a school and a community is because there's generations of disinvestment and, and institutional neglect, right? And so it's not as easy as throwing some laptops and hotspots in people's hands and expecting it to be better any more than couponing your way to equity. Like it's just, it, it's the same thing as, you know, thinking that SNAP benefits are gonna solve hunger, right? It's just a bandaid, right? And so we really have to focus on the underlying kind of structural issues. And that's where city government is, that's what we're designed to do. Right. We, we, we're we supposed to be here to do the hard stuff and the private sector will never close the digital divide on their own. There's no there's not a sufficient you know, profit motive and incentive. Right. It's just that's what businesses do. It's not a it's not a morality thing or a you know, value judgment. It's 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 how this stuff's supposed to work. Right. So so we one of the things that, that we've done and I'm literally I think today might be within a day or two of my official, you know, one year anniversary in, in my second stint in city hall under, uh, and with the new mayor, Mayor Scott. But um, we, we published a, a digital equity framework last fall, which was really intended to be kind of a roadmap and just you know, like compass points, right? And, and one, of, one of those key tenants was declaring access as critical public infrastructure, right? Um, and, and treating it as such. And, and what does that mean, right? Well, one is, you know, we you know, pointed to, well, I'm using all these sports metaphors today. I pointed to, I'm gonna have to point to left field, which is going this way. Um, we want to close the digital divide in, in Baltimore permanently by 2030, right? That's a that's a heavy lift. Um, seems like a lot of time, but it's nothing because what we're, what we're also saying by, by saying that is that we're gonna undo generations of disinvestment. And, and that means that we need to build a municipally owned fiber to the premise network to support um, not just better internet access, but all network delivered services, right? So that's a big piece. Um, and we're starting in the most um, socioeconomically disadvantaged neighborhoods, the most underserved, even though the FCC says they're served, we know they're not because of the 150,000 households in Baltimore, which is roughly 40,000 of our households. We have around 340,000 passings, right? Um, if you're looking at it from a network perspective, um, it's estimated that 150 some thousand people are, or households are eligible for the affordable connectivity benefit, right? And close to 100,000 do not have a connection at all, a, a land, you know, a wireline access connection, right? So, so clearly, even though we have a, a large ISP, residential ISP in Baltimore um, that has a ACP compliant product and, and you know, it's not working because it's the private sector. And I just think that that's something that we just fundamentally have to say, you know, we, we got to do the heavy lifting. You know, it's, it's incumbent on us, same way that the city, you know, maintains roads and, you know, municipal water system, it's a utility. Doesn't mean we necessarily have to be an ISP. We're going to build the roads.